1992, Jenny and Kevin Kelly, former Museum Victoria Exhibitions Manager, and their young family left Melbourne for Kununurra, Western Australia. Kevin had been offered the job of Exhibitions Officer and later Manager of that town's Aboriginal Arts Centre, Warringarri Arts. It was a move that was to lead him to work closely with all the great founding Kimberley Ochre artists, including Rover Thomas, Queenie Mackenzie, Jack Britton, Freddie Timms and many others. It also inspired the Kellys to later establish their own art studio and gallery, Red Rock Art in Kununurra, to work with artists not represented by Warren Gary or the later established Warman Arts. From 1997 to 2016, Kevin and Jenny worked with up to 40 artists, originally from the Great Sandy Desert in the south to Wave Hill in the north, who were then living in Kununurra or nearby. In effect, the artists of Red Rock Art created a parallel school of Kimberley ochre painting to that of Warren Gary, Warman and the Wandjana painters of Columbaroo and Derby. The exhibition Baragu to Bernalulu brings together more than 30 paintings by eight significant Red Rock artists and offers a unique opportunity to explore the art of this important school of Kimberley ochre painting. The exhibition includes rare works by George Wallaby, senior custodian of Baragu, or Lake Gregory, paintings of Bunululu, the Bungle Bungles, by Jimmy Mackenzie, some of the famous artist Queenie Mackenzie, and those by Jock Mosquito, one of the first group of Kimberley artists to start painting in ochre in the 1980s, having worked alongside Rover Thomas as a stockman. Detailed sugar bag or honey dreaming works are by Ned Johns from Wave Hill, grandson of the famous Vincent Lingiari, whose photograph with Gough Whitlam at the handover of the region to its Aboriginal owners marked a momentous occasion in contemporary Aboriginal history. Nellie Gordon's works include those that provide a unique record of Kimberley women's ceremonies, and Nancy Nunju's imaginative depictions of wind on water are painted in a soft pink ochre that became her signature colour. Youngest artist in the group, and one of the last to paint with red rock art, Lloyd Quiller, details renditions of his waterhole country in the Great Sandy Desert, inherited from his father, Billy Thomas, Kanta Kanta. Kevin and Jenny Kelly tell the Red Rock story and give insight into the works. Prior to us moving to the Kimberley, I worked as a um, uh, preparator, then manager at the Museum of Victoria. And... Um, uh, as time went by, I felt like I wasn't enjoying it as much as I should have. And so we decided to make a move, a complete move, an adventurous move to the Kimberley. While at the museum, I developed an interest in Indigenous culture, Australian Indigenous culture, and not easy in a place like Melbourne to really get much experience in that field. Uh, the museum had given me a taste of it through, through work I'd done with them. And uh, so I decided to leave and uh, look for a job within the art sector in the Indigenous art movement. There was a, a number of jobs available that I may, may have been able to uh, get, and I chose to apply for the Warringarri job, uh, which I was interviewed for and, and was fortunate enough to get it. So we moved as a, as a family. We drove up by road arriving on, I think, the 16th of May, 1992, and it was raining, which it doesn't rain much. We set up home here and worked. I was initially appointed as the exhibitions coordinator for Warringarri, uh, but within 12 months I'd become the manager um, and set about raising the profile of Warringarri Arts and developing the exhibition schedule. And, and getting financially stable after being a fairly poor way. Uh, Warren Gary worked across a number of communities, um, mainly the uh, Kununurra community, of course, but they also serviced Warman, uh, Warman community through fortnightly visits. Uh, we flew in and out of Columbaroo and Port Keats on a monthly basis, providing art materials and collecting completed art. And at my time of my arrival, the core group of artists were um, uh, Paddy Carlton Mirawong, Alan and Peggy Griffiths, uh, Peggy's Mirawong, uh, and then Rover Thomas, who had already established himself as an artist through 
his earlier work with Mary Maha, and then, of course, Jack Britton, Hector Jean Danae, Queenie McKenzie were just a few of the other artists that made the core group of, of, of that arts centre at the time. In 1995, we put a team together. Um, Rummel Peters was on that team, an Indigenous cameraman, uh, a mechanic, um, and we drove down the West Coast and then east into Punmu and then onto the Canning Stock Route where Rover was born. And it was by his wish we did this. And we visited his, his birthplace at Yelda Soak, as well as his dreaming site, the Wild Dog Dreaming. And uh, and that uh, trip inspired him to paint another body of work and inspired on that return to country. My time at Warringah was limited. Um, Due, I think mainly to the fact it wasn't incorporated independently. It was part of the larger Warren Gary Corporation, and that was prohibitive in, in, in what the Art Centre could achieve. Um, and I identified a need in, in town here uh, for an alternative gallery, not just for Indigenous artists, for non-Indigenous artists as well, where people could go regardless of their language group or their skin colour and go and paint in a studio and so Jenny and I set that up in late 1997. George Wallaby was early, very early. Uh, Nellie Gordon, uh, Ned Johns, Maggie Johns, Danny Wallace, Nancy Nungju, uh, a number of Warman artists came to paint. Uh, Queenie did a bit of work with us before Warman was set up. But Freddie Timms came on board. Uh, Billy Duncan came on board, all artists uh, living here but living out of country. And that was the idea behind it, to provide a space for artists that didn't really have a space to paint and a support, complete support network, pick up for work, drop off for work, health issues, um, all that stuff. George was born at Lake Gregory, uh, which is part of the is the name of the lake in Walmagani. Um, that's also George's name. And so he is the keeper of the lake. Um, he had moved away as a stockman with a young man and actually worked uh, with a, a driver called Wally Dowling, who Rover Thomas worked with, and so did Billy Thomas. So, um, uh, and once those days finished, uh, George found his, he had family, connections up here in Kanana and, and returned to Emu Creek to, to, to live. And so uh, he wasn't necessarily happy painting with a mural wall organisation. And so he was, um, he jumped at the opportunity to, to, to paint with Red Rock. His work always centred around Lake Gregory. So it was Lake Gregory and Sturt Creek, that, which is the, the creek that flows into Lake Gregory. Nancy and Nellie are both Wollamagudi, so that they're at the beginning if that's, that's we start at the western end of that country. Um, and then we go through Gidji country where we have Jimmy McKenzie, uh, son of Queenie McKenzie, who painted with us for many years, a Gidja artist. Um, then we move on to Jock Mosquito and Billy Duncan and Ned Johns, Gurindji men. Uh, although Jock has Jaru as well. And uh, uh, that country is, a lot of that country is in the Northern Territory. Uh, a lot of their country, their Wayfield and so on. Nellie was married to George Wallaby and, uh, and she joined George painting not too long after George did uh, at Red Rock Art. And then George passed away um, and Nellie kept going for it years beyond. Her paintings were more ceremonial designs, quite a lot of uh, women's ceremonial paint designs and dress designs. She often painted that women's ceremony um, and you know, the paintings themselves sort of know, like you know, the design is sort of, you no, know, it's a breast design that each and each language group would have a different design. 
and that's what they would paint up for themselves up so you no know, for ceremony um, and then they would have a small dance board they would shuffle in with the men and sing along with the songs all the different designs are different language groups then you'll see in the paintings all different size breasts representing all different size women and you no know, like little breasts for um, young women which she called milk breasts Nellie's so I think her favourite memories are sort of you no know, of those of just when she was a teenager, you know, early early twenties, you no, know, like around that age, and she would do a lot of sort of you no know, camping out with um, the other women, and that's where they would do all their sort of you no know, the gathering sort of stuff and sort of you no know, collecting sort of bush tucker and making damper and and things like that, and I think that's you no know, like they're her fond memories. Nancy uh, took us to a place near Bailu, near Fitzroy Crossing, was near the turn off to Cherubin Sacred, to an ochre site where we found these uh, beautiful soft yellows and mauve coloured ochres. And we collected them, we collected good amounts, and um, she used those for years, those ochres, starting with the darkest. We, we used the charcoal for black. The starters, if it's part of the, the dark end. Uh, and then there's a dark chocolate ochre uh, that comes from the site near Wonka Junka, and that's a rich, very rich, deep brown. Um, uh, then there's a, a red, a powerful, powerfully strong red ochre that comes from the northeast of Kununurra, from a place called Maryland on. Um, uh, on La June Station, where we collect ochre there, and we, we actually buy it off mural and malt, that one. Uh, they also are yellow out there, and there's a whole range of yellows, uh, rich, rich golden ones, uh, which come from warmer area, uh, and then a whole range of yellows dropping down to very, very soft yellows from Bailu community near Fitzroy. We have greenish coloured ochres, you, have, uh, you can make a blue up if you want a pale blue. Pure white ochre is titanium trioxide, and there's a site to the north of here where we can get that. Or you can burn down a quartz crystal, which I I didn't learn till many years after I started in working with ochre. I met Lloyd as a 16 year old. He um he came up to visit his father Billy Thomas, who was living with us at the time and painting with red rock. And uh, Billy uh, initially started painting with Lloyd or getting Lloyd to come up and paint. And then uh, after a while, Lloyd became a, a quite a serious full-time painter with, with red rock art. And we had many successful exhibitions together. Lloyd's given birthplace was Quilliai, well 43 on Canning Stock Group, which he, we visited many times together. And, and he obviously did on his own as well. And so he painted that country primarily um, and aspects of that country, fire, wind, and so on. And then country to the north called Wala, um, he painted that country as well. But he stayed very much within the boundary of his, his own country. Lloyd was second generation Red Rock artist. And um, he, he moved on to the West Kimberley and uh, as Red Rock Art was closing. Him and Nally were the last person to paint with Red Rock Art. I think this is a, a very good cross-section of Red Rock Art, this exhibition.